It's good to see everyone. Um, obviously, it's a very exciting time of year. Um, uh, being a basketball nut like I am, I woke up and knowing that there's some games on tonight, I got a little bit extra bounce to my step because um, it's officially basketball season. Um, it's it's been it's it's interesting because the college basketball season has gotten so long. You know, we in in a good way we have more access than we've ever had and. Uh, we have an opportunity to be around our guys more. So uh, our guys are very anxious to start playing against some other people. Um, uh, certainly for us, it's been a good off season. I thought we uh, really maximized uh, some of the things we needed to do. Our guys really worked hard. A number of the guys you'll see physically, I think, have gotten stronger, uh, especially those that were here last year. Uh, the freshmen who are now sophomores, I was really pleased with what they've done physically. Uh, McIntosh, uh, Lindsey, Law, Skelly, um, all look look older. They look like sophomores now, which is always a good thing. Um, you know, our seniors, our older guys have done a really good job. You know, you have the four older guys that have been here with me uh, since my first day here, um, Trey and Alex and, and Taphorn and Lumpkin. And, you know, the, to me, they're, you know, even though you can say they were recruited by a previous regime, um, you know, they're, they're our guys and they have been with me for, you know, so they, they know what I expect uh, on and off the court. And that's been nice. Um, every program talks about culture. Um, and, you know, for ours, I've really felt like this off season coming into this year, um, our culture was in a good spot in terms of with guys being able to hold each other accountable for what I expect day in and day out. And to me, that's those are the best teams. The best teams are the ones that the guys take care of a lot of that stuff. And the coaches, all the coaches have to do is worry about coaching and execution. If the coach has to worry about attitudes and effort and enthusiasm and, and all those things, then you're taking away time uh, from actually teaching and coaching. And, and then it's very hard to win, especially against the competition that we play in our conference. So uh, we had a summer trip that was outstanding for our team. Uh, a lot of guys got a chance to play. Uh, the way I approached the trip was Really, we wanted to win. There was no question about it, but I started a different lineup every game. I played different guys together. Uh, everyone got pretty much equal time uh, so the guys could really show what they could do out there uh, against, you know, other guy, against people that didn't know what we were doing. So uh, looking forward to getting started in the next couple of weeks, obviously our exhibition game next week, and um, and then heading into the conference or into the non-conference slate. Uh, it's going to be very important for us. One of the things that I think we have to do better is, is play better basketball out of the gate. You know, I think in year one, obviously, it's tough because everything is new. I'm learning about the guys. They're learning about me. I really thought in my first year, we didn't really fully realize who we were until, you know, three games into the conference uh, when we went with Jershon and point guard, played a bigger lineup, and, and we won. You know, we got to five and five after losing our first three games, and then Jershon Cobb went down with the injury, and we were never the same. Uh, last year, again, it was five freshmen into the mix. So you had some returning guys, but then you're trying to integrate five guys that we didn't know what they could bring to the table. So... You know, certainly for us, I thought we didn't play as well early in the season last year either, uh, even though we were able to win some games uh, early that maybe we could have lost. Um, I think it's going to be very important this year uh, that we that we play good basketball in November and December. And every team has as aspirations to do things in March. I don't think we're any different. Uh, if you don't have those aspirations, then you shouldn't be coaching or playing. And I've had those aspirations every team that I've been on since I've been a part of college as a player or coach. So to do that, though, you can't skip any steps along the way. Uh, you have to handle your business, what's in front of you. And um, our guys, I think, have approached it and had a good attitude about it. And like I said, it's I don't want this team to feel any kind of pressure for carrying the weight of what has or hasn't happened in this school and program's history. Uh, it's not fair to them. Uh, I want them to enjoy the journey. I want them to enjoy the process. Uh, this is their moment. This is their time. And we'll get what we earn at the end of the year. This current team has seven months to be together. Uh, let's try to make the most of it. And let's see, let's see who we can become as a team. 
And at the end of the day, we'll get what we earn. And, um, and that's how we've approached our off-season training, and that's how we'll approach coming into the season. So um, open for any questions that any of you guys may have. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Doing well. Um, so what are you doing differently this year than you've done um, in the past two years? From a playing perspective? Play, or? On and off the court. Well, I think on the court, um, you know, I think we're, we have more guys, you know, which has been nice. Uh, I think for me, the biggest adjustment, every team that I've always been a part of, most of them at, at, at least, have always kind of had maybe seven or eight guys that stood out amongst the rest. And, um, you know, we didn't have as much depth like that in the past because of injuries and just sheer number of players. We had some turnover, which happens a lot with, with coaching changes. But, you know, really this year with our roster breakdown, you know, we have 12 guys, 12 scholarship players. And I really feel all of them are Big Ten caliber players that can help. And, you know, for me, uh, from a day-to-day -day standpoint in practice, like different teams win each day, which is nice. And there's great competition and there's, there's really good depth. And I think we need to, I think we're going to be a team that can be a strength in numbers type of team. You know, I think we're going to have to utilize our pieces and, you know, we're going to be the kind of team, I think on a given night, there could be a different leading scorer. You know, there's five or six guys to me that I think on a, on a, on a given night could lead us in scoring. Now, certainly there's going to be more expected of, I mean, our, there's going to be a lot placed on our two guards, McIntosh and Demps, and I think they're ready for that. You know, Alex Ola has been a guy who has a lot of experience. Um, and then after that, I think everybody can has their niche on this team. So I think for me, figuring out how to use what we have to our advantage, I've always felt that's what coaching is. You know, coaching is not me just saying, this is how I want to play. Coaching is looking at the group you have and saying, okay, what do we have? What are we good at? And let's, let's devise a system and a plan um, to utilize those things. And I think that's what we've been trying to do in the off season. Uh, I think from a defensive standpoint, I'd like to be a better defensive team this year. I thought our defensive numbers slipped last year. Um, I thought our offense was greatly improved last year. We, uh, we ran much better offense. We had more firepower. We scored the ball better. Uh, our flow was much better, and then we took steps backwards defensively. And, you know, I think uh, we have to have uh, greater resolve on that end of the floor. Um, I think we're going to mix defenses a little bit. Um, we've been working a lot on our man-to-man -man defense. Uh, I think it's better than it was, hopefully, at least when we get into the games. But I think the zone was good for us as well at the end of the year, and we can't abandon that. So uh, I think we're going to be a team that maybe does some different things defensively, mixes it up a little bit, and then um, you know continues to run and evolve from the offense that we won last year. Um, we're a team that relies on a lot of ball movement and player movement. We're not a one-on-one -on -one team. Uh, really, Trey Demps is the only guy that um, is a guy that can just break you down. and which is fine. There's a lot of teams in the world. You know, a team like San Antonio Spurs is a ball movement team. So we need to realize who we are offensively and understand we need to cut well, we need to screen well, we need to understand spacing, we need to be able to move the ball, execute our stuff, and create offense together. And so those are all things that I think we're trying to evolve with as our team. Um, in terms of off the floor, I love where our chemistry's at. I think our camaraderie is terrific. Uh, the guys love being around each other. They spend a lot of time together. Um, there's a really good vibe uh, when you see the group. Uh, attitudes have been great, and hopefully that'll continue to be so. It's it's good to have a good. It's good to have. It's easy to have a good attitude when everybody's getting equal playing time in practice. And the the test is always is, is always becomes when you get to games, and roles are defined. Are guys gonna understand what their role is? Are they gonna star in their role? And, and to me, those are, those are really big keys to winning teams. So, uh, what are your expectations for Alex as far as him getting to the next level and how he'll help lead you? Well, I think consistency, certainly. I mean, Alex, you guys have seen there's nights where he's unstoppable and then there's nights where he struggled. So I'm hoping to find some consistent ground. 
Uh, I think the best thing that's happened for Alex has been, you know, having Joey Van Zegger and Derek Pardon join our program because on a day to day basis now he's challenged uh, against Big Ten against Big Ten caliber centers, and so it forces him to be good on a daily basis. Uh, in the past, he was so much better uh, than what he was playing against in practice, and you get a false sense of then what you're going to play against in a game. Um, you know, I've, I felt like we were a little bit fortunate in the last two years that we avoided anything in terms of injury, uh, foul trouble with Alex. You know, we we played him heavy, heavy minutes which in our conference at that, that position uh, is unique. Um, I feel he can be more productive in a little bit less minutes. I thought he played a lot of tired minutes last year just from the sheer standpoint of he would look at me and give me the nod like he wanted a sub and I would just look the other way because there was, there was really nowhere to turn. So um, I, I feel like him being a little bit fresher at all times uh, hopefully can make him better and make him even more productive. And I, I like the off season he's had. He's in, he's in really good shape. He's worked incredibly hard. And I don't think there's any secret in order for us to be a good team and a competitive team, we need him to be uh, a, guy, a, a force for us each and every night. And that's something we're striving for. Uh, Chris, how have you grown and matured as a head coach since you took this position? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we have enough time to go through all of them, but um, I mean, it's just like all of you guys. I mean, until like the jobs you're in, until you're there, until you're put under fire, until you're forced to make the decisions you have to make, you don't really know what it entails. And certainly I felt prepared coming in as, a per as I could have been without being a head coach. But there's so many things in the two years, you know, that I've learned about um, mainly about managing a team you know, I think in so much of nowadays, because our season is so spread out, uh, a lot of what you have to do now is learning when to push, when to pull back, how to how to work your team throughout the course of a year. Um, certainly game decisions, um, you know, it's much easier to do when you're on your couch uh, watching than it is when you're actually in the fire and you have to, you're not making suggestions anymore. You're actually making decisions on substitutions, calling plays defenses, uh, end of game things, what to do out of timeouts, you know, all those things that I feel confident coming in, but I feel that much more confident now having done it for two years. Um, you know, you just, you learn. I, I feel like I have a much greater uh, appreciation for what our league's all about. Um, when you're in the Big Ten for the first time, like even just the road trips, you know, do, how to get to Illinois, Indiana, Michigan State. How do you, how do you set up your trips? When do you shoot around? Where do you stay? You know, those are things you learn. Um, you know, having gone through it, so um, I feel like I know the league a little bit better. There's been great continuity in our conference with coaches, so you feel like you, you have a little bit better feel for what people are trying to do. Um, it's amazing coaching in the Big Ten. It really is. Uh, uh, we just had meetings with our media day last, and, and we had a coaches meeting. And I think all of us, you know, from Coach Izzo, who's been here forever, and, and Coach Painter, and, and those guys who who have a lot of longevity, to the new guys, me, Richard Patino, Tim Miles, everybody's in awe of the level of coaching and where everybody's programs are at. You know, at this point in the Big Ten, I mean, it's. It's a great league. I mean, I'd be hard-pressed. I know the ACC is a great league as well, and, and I've been a part of that a long time. But top to bottom, I can't imagine there being a better, a better league than our league this year. Um, it's going to be it's going to be really fun for you guys to watch. It's going to be a nightmare for coaches, but it's going to be really fun for the fans because on any given night, I think anybody can win, and uh, that's what makes a great league. And we're excited to see where we fit into that. Chris, so we have a new shot clock this year mm -hmm. in college basketball. How do you think that might impact the, the college game overall and more specifically how will it apply to, to your team and how you play? I really think in the long term it's going to be great for our game. I think it's a great change. I mean, I've been a big proponent for 24. I mean, that's just how I'm why. I mean, I, I love the fact internationally that 10-year-old kids play with a 24-second shot clock overseas. There's one set of rules. You know, I'd love for there to be one set of rules from the juniors all the way up to the pro level. And that's what they do internationally. And you learn how to make plays. You learn how to push the ball. You learn how to get into things. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, I'd love to get to 24 eventually. I think 30 is a good step. 
Uh, I think it'll help. I, I though, think initially in year one it's going gonna, it's gonna to help the defense. I think if you watch an NBA game, the NBA guys are so good that under, understanding, excuse me, understanding that when you have six seconds or seven seconds left, that's an eternity. And those guys are so good at managing their shot clock and, and getting shots at the end of a clock. I think that's going to be such a key thing on the college level. I think college kids, especially early, they're going to see six seconds on the clock and you're going to see a lot of bad shots. You're going to see kids panic. Uh, you're going to see four shots, and I think the best teams are going to be the ones that win the late shot clock game. And like I look like a team at, like Wisconsin when it was 35. You know, Wisconsin was a little bit more deliberate offensively. Wisconsin was the best team to me, and especially the last two years, they had a special team. But they've always been the best team at the end of clocks, not only on offense but on defense. And I think you're going to see the teams that win uh, are going to be the ones that are, are able to manage late clock situations because coaches are really good. Coaches are going to do different things defensively. They're going to have containment presses. They're going to take the ball out of your point guard's hand. They're going to do everything they can to get the clock against you and make you have to rush at the end. And I think you're going to have that. The teams that are going to be good and win are the ones that are going to be poised, that get good shots at the end of clocks, and then get stops at the end of clocks. And um, those are things we've worked on a lot. And I think it's helped us with the foreign trip. We played 24 second shot clock all summer. So, you know, for two months, we were playing 24 second shot clock. And uh, so I, th I hope that'll help us. I think on our five games over in Europe, we had one shot clock violation. In, in our five games over there with a 24 second shot clock. So I was pretty pleased with how our guys handled it. And it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be something that'll be, it'll be interesting to see. And I actually think in year one, you might see the defensive you know, be at the advantage. But over the long haul, I like it because it's gonna speed up. You gotta get the ball up the court. You gotta get into your stuff, which I'm a proponent of all those things. Uh, Coach, you mentioned that preseason trip to Europe and how helpful that was uh, for your team. What were you able to learn about some of your new players during that trip that maybe you couldn't do the past couple of years? Yeah, well, I mean, anytime you have new players, it's one thing to watch them in high school and kind of peek in on them and get a feel. But when you're around them in game situations, you learn what they can and can't do, you know, what they're confident with, what they're struggling with. Um, and I feel like all of our guys did a really good job. Um, you know, with the, with the th with, it was huge for Joey Van Zegren because, you know, he parted ways with Virginia Tech last year in December. So he hadn't played an organized game since last December. So, and for a big guy, you know, I, I've made mention of it. Like, it's hard for a big guy to just go play pickup when you're 6'10", 245, 250. Like, there's just not that many guys. Like, a guard could go over to SPAC and kind of get in a game and play. Like, it's hard for a guy who's 6'10", 240 to do that. So to play against other guys his size. So I think the trip was great for Joey because it gave him five games to really, like, see where his conditioning is at, see where his rust level was. And I've noticed a big jump from him from those games. For the freshmen, it was terrific as well with Aaron, jo uh, Derek, and Jordan. Um, all those guys are pretty mature guys. Um, the thing I like about all those guys is they're coming to a team this year that does have a lot of experience back. So they can lean on that experience and they can learn as they go along. Last year was tough because we threw a lot of freshmen into the fire and they had to learn while they were going through some tough times. And part of those tough times were 10 straight losses in the league. And I mean, Vic, Scotty, Bryant, those kids played heavy minutes right away. And we lost Jershon for a big, you know, and it put even more on him. So, you know, this year I like for our freshmen that they're coming into a team that does have pretty good experience around them, that, that they can lean on that and kind of figure it out as they go along. But I don't think there's any reason why uh, those guys can't really help us contribute and have a nice role on this team. You just answer my question, so. Okay. It's always good to answer the question. Um, speaking of the freshmen, though, how, what have you seen from Aaron, Jordan, Derek so far? Yeah, I mean, Aaron, Aaron brings that element of shooting that just cannot be understated. I mean, we all talk about the lack of offense. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm big in recruiting guys that can, that can put the ball in the basket. It's very hard when you're trying to play. At the end of the day, to win, you've got to score more than the other team. 
So uh, you got to be sound defensively, but you got to find ways to put it in the basket. And when you have guys out on the floor that aren't good shooters, coaches are pretty good in our league and the people we play against, they know how to have the ball end up in that guy's hands. And so, you know, with Aaron, I mean, his ability to shoot the ball at six foot eight um, is a huge thing. And he brings a good basketball IQ. Uh, he's one of those hybrid forwards, you know, where you can use him. We don't really have a numbered system, but, you know, people say three, four, whatever, you know, that kind of small forward, power forward position. I kind of call them hybrid players that you see a lot of teams now have. Um, he fits that bill where you can play him with a lot of different kind of players and different kind of lineups. And he really helps stretch the defense because he needs to be guarded at all times. And, you know, I think he's, he, I feel he's as good a catch and shoot player coming into college as there is in the country. Uh, he's, he's that good of a shooter. Uh, Jordan brings a toughness, a winning mentality. Uh, he's a state champion here at St. Joe's and he's a dirty work guy. You know, to me, he's going to bring a lot of the things that Sanjay brings to our front line. I think Jordan can bring to our backcourt. He's not afraid to, to be physical with other teams' guards. He's a tremendous defender, and he, can, and he can score a little bit too. You know, he makes open shots. He's athletic. He gets to the basket. To me, he provides us with a good third guard behind Bryant and Trey where he can play with either one of those guys and, and be effective. Uh, Derek to me, has an enormously high upside. Um, he's, he's only about 6'8", but he's got a 7'3 wingspan. So he's 6'8", that plays 6'11". Uh, he can really run the floor. He's an outstanding shot blocker. He's a different kind of big guy that we've had. You know, he's very mobile. He's an incredibly active on the boards. He's relentless. He's a hard worker. Um, it'll be interesting this year because big guys, you know, they're... They're on, they're on a different timetable. So I think he sees that there's two seniors kind of that he's playing with that are experienced, that are going to be. And, but I think Derek has a great attitude about what his career, I mean, we got, we're, with the role he can fill this year, but also, you know, he, I, I feel Derek has an, an enormous future here. And I'm really, he's even better than I thought he would be coming in out of high school. And um, you guys are gonna love watching his progression over the next few years. Okay, um, Coach, you tweeted earlier this week a little bit about um, Flip's passing and his yeah. influence on you. Could yeah. you talk about his influence on you and then also who have been the most influential people on you as a head coach? Well, fortunately for me, um, you know, Flip Saunders, obviously uh, it was a sad day the other day because you didn't hear about that much about what was going on with him other than that he was battling cancer and when I saw that he had passed I really got upset because uh, when I tried out for the NBA coming out of college I went to training camp with the Timberwolves and so I was there for two months uh, and that's when they had Garnett as a young player Tom Gugliotta Stefan Marbury those were kind of their core three guys that they were building around um, I was around there for two months and um, he was such an innovative coach. He was a terrific offensive coach. Uh, it's funny, some of the things I do offensively are plays that I learned from him. And he was just, he loved coaching. He loved teaching. Uh, he was an upbeat guy. And even though I didn't make the team, we stayed in touch throughout the years. Anytime I saw him, he, you know, he might reach out when we won a big game and just congratulate me. Anytime I saw him anywhere within basketball circles, we always caught up. Uh, so he was someone I considered a friend, someone who I learned a lot about coaching from. I think the thing that a lot of people have talked about with him is just it, it was refreshing to see. He always, the joy of it, always outweighed any of the things that maybe that are annoyances to us. You know, especially at that level, they got to deal with a lot of social media and people negative, naysayers, all the, he loved teaching, he loved being around the game, he loved coaching, and that's something I learned a lot from him was, you know, there might be things you don't like about the job, and that's good, but the passion of what you do love about it has to outweigh that, and you have to enjoy that part of it. Um, you know, so for him, he was someone I learned a lot from. For me, my main mentors are first and foremost my dad. Uh, I learned the game by sitting in my him on one couch, me on the other, watching games just like I will tonight with my own son. Um, when the games come on, we'd sit on the couch and we'd just talk about the game. And it was pretty nice to have a basketball encyclopedia you know, next to me explaining to me everything that was going on when I was a young kid. That's how I learned about basketball and then tagging along with him 
being a ball boy for the Bulls when I was, you know, 12 to 15 years old, uh, always being around when he coached, when he broadcast. Um, I always say to this day, I think I've told some of you guys, it's amazing. I was, when, when I was a little kid, my dad played for the 76ers. These were the kids that were in the family room on this team. There was always a family room where the kids and the wives stayed to wait for the, wait for the players after the game. These were the kids that were in that family room on the, on the mid-76ers. You had me, who went on to play at Duke and become a coach. The point guard was a guy named Henry Bibby, who had a son named Mike Bibby, who was a pretty darn good player. You had a power forward named Harvey Ketchings, who has a daughter who turned out to be pretty good, named Tamika Ketchings. She's one of the greatest women's players of all time. The backup point guard on that team was a guy named Mike Dunleavy, who's got a son who you guys follow a little bit here in Chicago, who I then coached at Duke. And then there was a small forward on that team by the name of Joe Jellybean Bryant, who had a son that they called Kobe. So we were the guy, we were the little kids that were in the, in the, in the family room every day. So it's pretty amazing. You talk about being around the game and, and, and what people have become. And um, that's the childhood I had, which was very lucky. Coach K, um, can't say enough about the mentor he's been for me on all levels. Um, he was my coach. And, and then for me to learn about coaching from him for 13 years was something that is just invaluable. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't think through every situation we have or I don't rely on him for guidance and things that I'm going through as a coach. And then another great mentor for me was Tommy Amaker. Um, Tommy gave me my first job when I was breaking into coaching. He hired me at Seton Hall and I was 24 years old and I was trying to break into coaching and uh, he was an assistant coach of mine at Duke. And, you know, for, I've leaned on him a lot because he's taken over three different programs, Seton Hall, Michigan, and Harvard. And he's taken them in situations where they were in certain places and he's had to build a program. And, you know, what he's done at Harvard, you know, which is a place where nobody thought that you could be good in basketball. Now they've been the dominant program in the Ivy League. He's getting top 100 players to go there. They've been to the NCAA tournament, I think, five or six years in a row. Uh, he's been a great mentor for me as I've tried to build this program at a similar type school. So, you know, really when, when you talk about those guys, um, you know, to me, those are three really good resources that, that I've had a chance to be around in my life and I've learned from. Last year, you had an adjustment process to the NCAA. You mentioned he was thrown into the fire a little bit with the other freshmen. Uh, yeah. Where do you think he is at the, in his, the course of his development at the outset of this season? Yeah, I think Vic is in a great place. I think, you know, for a lot of reasons, and he wanted this. You know, Vic was the first guy to jump on board. He was a highly touted high school player. You know, he was the first guy to say, I want to be a part of what you're building. Um, and, and others followed. McIntosh followed. Law, Lindsay followed. Skelly followed. But he was the first. And with that becomes a lot of expectation. And I think there was a lot of maybe undue expectation on him out of the gate uh, for what he would maybe be right away. I thought he had a very solid freshman year. Um, if you compare it to what Jalil Okafor or Stanley Johnson or Justice Winslow did, then obviously you're going to say, you know, well, that's not what. But for, for a good player as a freshman, what he averaged six and a half, seven points, four or five rebounds, played a lot of minutes, got better as the season went along. I thought the last month of the season he played his best basketball. I actually thought he had a pretty good freshman year. And it's just the level of expectation on him was very high. And which is fine. That's part of it. We all deal with that. You know, there's high expectation on me. I get it. I'm good with that. But in terms of where where he is and his improvement, I thought he got better. He got more confident. Uh, he was knocked back a little bit early by physicality uh, and he responded. He got to work and he responded. He's had a good summer. Um, I think he's about 10, 10, 12 pounds heavier this year. Uh, he's strong. He's stronger. Um, he's developed his skill level. I think he's ready to, to make a jump. Um, we need it. We need that. You know, for us, we're a developmental program. You know, we have really good players. I like who I like where they're at. They're talented guys. But you know, in order for us to climb the ladder and, and get where we want to get, we have to to take those good players and help make them be really good players. And that's part of our formula. And one of those guys is Vic and our staff and has worked really hard with all those guys. And we've noticed improvement. And I've made no mistake. I, you may make no mistake, I've made no bones about 
his importance to what our team. In order for us to really become the team we need to be, uh, we need him and Scotty Lindsay to to be night in and night out, you know, good, solid Big Ten players. And I don't think there's any reason why they can't, given their athleticism, given their skill set, um, and the way we plan on using those guys. So, you know, to me, those two guys are big X factors for us, you know, becoming the team that we hope to become throughout the course of the season. All right, thank you guys.